Hey guys, it's been a long time. A lot of things happened when I was away, but I'm back. So let's just get right into it. First of all, uh, Bird is back, right? So in the previous video, I said Bird is nerfed and he really is nerfed. Uh, don't come to the comment session and tell me that it is deceptive. You used a like a defense type of team attacking your bird, so it doesn't make much damage. Guys, I am only using the video that I have as of the moment, but I can assure you the assumptions that I'm making is based on a lot of battles. I make an assumption based on all of those and then I just use one video or two videos to make some proof, right? So it's not just about one video. So yeah, don't don't assume I am making an assumption just based on one or two videos. So no, that's not the case. It's just I don't want this to be a 30 minute, 40 minute video. So I'm trying to use you know just a few videos to to prove it i mean uh you don't even have to look at the damage you just have to look at how many hits bird did like during the nerf bird was only doing one hit but now bird is back he is doing a lot of hits after the charge so again i am just going to show you one video i am using bird as my main and so this is the case in almost all of my bird videos all right, so this is our site. This is my bird. By the way, just to clarify, I showed a video where I sacrificed my bird. That is from the Ignatius account. That was just a A2 bird, so not a big deal. This one is an A4 bird, so I'm not going to sacrifice him. But yeah, so we still have a bird in my main account, and like bird is my stable here, and so he's, uh, we're using him again. So uh, same thing, nothing, uh, nothing unusual. I mean, you guys may say, all right, this is all attack types but like look at the look at the damage that he will do or like how many hits he will do uh just with that alone we can really say that see look at that how many hits was that a lot and so we can assume that now bird is actually back to the way he was before but he is actually stronger now because bird actually can do two or more uh, charges if you know we, we make it to that level because I can tell you uh, in the past in order for bird to use his skill again his HP has to go over 50% again and then when he is you know uh, when the cooldown ends uh, when the when the HP goes back below to 50% he will charge again but but before even if the cooldown is done uh, but you are starting at below 50% he will not charge right and this is out of all the battles i've done this is always the case but now it's been fixed so i would say bird is actually stronger now compared to before the nerf in the end net marble still did not address it like the question that i made still did not get an answer right so i guess they will just you know be quiet about it not address the bird situation the nerf uh but yeah so I don't, I don't think we can do anything about that it's just let's just be happy that bird is back and stronger than before and by the way i think i didn't show you so uh in the end he will be the mvp there's another video here i'm not gonna show you all of it but uh like uh there's another video here and he is again the mvp that is two straight battles he is the mvp so what more can you say like bird is really back and better than ever so he is again viable if you have your bird if you did not sacrifice him uh use him again especially now he is really good together with the buffed up or some people would say fixed but again the fixed really did buff up shrimp paler so we'll say it's a buff so during the buff of shrimp paler he is now a good uh combo with a bird now, speaking of the buff of Shrimp Baylor, this created a new meta or like a very popular lineup, which is Sorbor, Shrimp Baylor, and Toko, which is very, very annoying to deal with, especially if you don't have the water types to, to kill them. Uh, with a Sorbor that is enhanced twice, right? And a Toko that is, you know, at least at A9 or A10. With good toys it is really hard to kill I, I think i've lost a couple of times because i was not able to kill like in the end that three like the death lineup in my opinion so i'll show you exactly what it is um so no not that one uh by the way you can you can definitely uh use this one so this three uh toko shrimp baylor and sorbor 
right? So we all know that Sorbor, the uh, the toy of Sorbor is, uh, it reduces the damage that it's taken, right? So um, together with the fact that in the end, like during the three on three, he is powered up twice. So that gives him plus 80% uh, death, I think, if he's at A10. This is really crazy. And then Shrimpaler, uh, with the heals that he's doing, really like uh if it's on if it's three on three in the end uh it's it's an automatic loss if you are the one attacking a lot of people are are using that same lineup so vein stain Higgies, i'm sure there's a sore bore here somewhere this one we all know already uh but if you're showing sore bore and uh shrimp baylor chances are they won't attack you so if you're doing def uh hide your sore bore now this one uh look at that a10 shrimp baylor for sure, even though his CP is only at 329, this guy is baiting. Uh, there's a Sorbor here, I'm sure. And then there's one that is not really strong. Uh, but that's just to, you know, pull the CP back a little bit so that, you know, people will be baited to, to attack. I actually did this to uh, one of my accounts. Uh, so I have Sorbor, uh, Shrimp Paler, and Toko. And then I used a, uh, what do you call that? Lil thing? the the archer uh pipsqueak right so just to pull down the cp uh by a lot and then you know bait people all right this this guy is is weak but during defense if those three is left in battle it will be really hard to kill right so yeah you could definitely do that strategy just hide your sorbor and especially if your shimpaler is this strong hide it i'm not sure if people are gonna attack how to raise because this is really uh, scary. This is scary. Look at that. 5% HP every time he hits. That's a lot. And for sure, this guy has... All right, so he has the toys. Uh, two of the specific toys. It will be even more devastating if he has another one. But yeah, so this alone is really, really strong. I have an AA Shrimp Baylor and... I mean, but the toys is really, really good. But yeah, so... <laughs> So yeah, it, it is it is really strong, I would say. And so the point is, the buff of Shrimp Paler really created a new meta. Uh, if you want my advice on how to do this one, I would suggest so this three, and then the other two, uh, make sure that they're a nuker, right? Um, I would say uh, put in like. If if I would do this, I would probably put in a Suryu because. Uh, usually the frontliners are fire familiars or like there's gonna be a might and so you want to have them killed right away and the easiest way to kill them is to have a water familiar right and then another one um, it will be nice to have an ebon torex but I like I am using him in in, in different uh, accounts right and I feel like especially if I'm going against a Sorbor Trimpaler Toko it is really hard to to like win because if if in the end like this is really strong this three but if you're four against three uh like there's still a good chance that you will lose right so you want to have so you want to be able to do a three on three with this three uh standing in the end and then whoever is on the other team no matter how strong they are if it's three on three uh, chances are they won't be able to kill Sorbor uh, with a Shrimp Paler and Toko backing him up. And so, yeah, so the main goal in this meta, I would say, is to have someone to kill the other two from your opponent's side. So, and by the way, this is just an assumption. So with this one, I don't have a video proof because I, I am not really using this type of lineup, but maybe in the future I will, or maybe during another stream. By the way, the stream is going to be on Sunday so we will have another stream I feel like there's a lot of changes and there's gonna be a new meta and so it would be nice to have a, a, a new uh, a new stream so I'm gonna stream again on Sunday so if you are looking forward to the stream that is the time to do so again it's gonna be the same time 2 30 until let's say 4 right so let's do that but anyway so I wouldn't like Ebon would be nice but uh, you know, especially if he's strong, it would be nice. But I would go for an attacker, right? So maybe, maybe a might. I would say if you have a strong might, or 
a um, what do you call this? Ouroboros. But the thing about Ouroboros is he will be cancelled by an opponent's hippocampus, right? So, uh, I mean, hippocampus is not strong against Ouroboros, but you know what you want is for Ouroboros to be able to use his skill, and so maybe just choose uh, with with might. Uh, he won't be cancelled by a uh, a hippocampus. And since the the uh, at the skill of might does good damage as well, uh, I would probably do uh, might. I would put Suryu in front because I want him to die, right? <laughs> to power up Sorbor and so have that three on three in the end. And if your opponent has the Sorbor Toko Shimpeler lineup as well, if you are defending, it's your win, right? So uh, this is how I would uh, place them. By the way, this is on on defense. On offense, especially with a lot of people using Sorbor as well, like this three, uh, I wouldn't use Sorbor. I would do a lot more water familiars or not attack at all, especially if you're already in the top 100. Because, like, this meta is really, really frustrating. Like, it's, it's really hard to win against it. Uh, you really have to have the right pieces. The one that I'm using uh, in my main account, the one with bird and two water types, Suryu and Hippocampus, that one I am winning a lot. Uh, but uh, with the other uh, accounts that I have, no, not not at all. So uh, it's, it's going to be tough. Uh, better choose your opponents wisely nowadays. Uh, yeah, so make sure you, if you don't have a lot of water types, make sure you don't encounter... Like this three meta, like Sorbor, Shimpeler, Toko, uh, better choose other types of uh, uh, team, right? So, yeah, if if attacking, I would I would probably prefer Ebon, uh, especially if you have a Suryu with you, because with Ebon at least he will push Sorbor, right? And so that could, you know, negate the uh, this three, uh, the the combination of Shimpeler, Sorbor, and Toko. Uh, if you push the opponent's Sorbor uh, enough that uh, if Suryu uses his skill, uh, the Shrimp Paler would be hit as well, that that could win you the battle. Because, you know, in the end, it's possible that you'll be able to, you know, kill the Shrimp Paler. And so only Toko as the healer for Sorbor sometimes may not be enough. You know? So yeah, so that could uh, give you a win eventually. Okay, uh, another familiar that is getting popular now, I would say, is Dinosaurus. Because with Dinosaurus, uh, it really removes the one in your front line or the opponent's front line. So if there's a Sorbor here or whoever, uh, chances are uh, it will be pushed to the very back of the battlefield. And so uh, you will be able to kill the the ones that he is protecting, like Toko or Shrimpaler, right? So uh, that's why Dinosaurus right now is getting really popular. And so if you haven't used uh, Dinosaurus yet and you have him at High Awakening, uh, and you don't have like a, a good lineup to work with, and that's why we are going to do a stream on, on Sunday. So maybe you can use uh, Dinosaurus. Uh, and then sometimes people also use... Uh, uh, Staghorn together with Dinosaurus, so that would be a good combo, especially with the current meta. Uh, I would say this is now getting more and more viable. All right, so I wanted to show you exactly what I'm talking about, but unfortunately, during the battles that I was away, I was not able to record them, and now that I wanted to record them, they're already uh, flooded away, okay? Uh, but this kind of have what I was talking about, but instead of Suryu being in front, uh, might is the one in front okay so kind of not ideal but i guess we will see here how just how tanky sorbor is and like in like j let's be honest my 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 team here is actually the perfect counter to this kind of lineup right so that's why i am going to win eventually right so like if you put might in front i have two water familiars here that is very very strong short work that's going to die very easily. So uh, what you want is to trade, right? So you want to kill one of your opponent when your uh, one of your familiar uh, dies, right? So uh, that did not happen for him, right? But see how tanky Sorbor is. So uh, 1, 21, uh, 1 minute and 21 seconds. There's a hippo in Suryu, Shrimp Baylor, and Bird attacking Sorbor, 
right? And there's going to be a bird skill as well. So this is a swordboard that is powered up once only, right? So, but he will, you know, look at that. He is really tanking things up. If I didn't have the ideal familiar, uh, this could have been bad, right? Uh, the only problem I have is this Suryu uh, together with the three. So basically, you're only going to power up Sorbor 1. So this is not even a full potential Sorbor in that type of lineup, right? So yeah, so not ideal, but still doing really well, I think. Right, so it's going to be healed. Now Suryu will use his skill, thus will kill Sorbor easily and... It just so happened that uh, he is close enough to uh, Shrimpele, and that's why Shrimpele died as well. But uh, lasted about like 12 seconds, right? That is that is a long time considering I do have two water familiars here, and Bird was also able to use a skill against a Sorbor. By the way, uh, the, the one that I'm talking about earlier. So Bird uses his skill right away, even though... Um, what do you call this? Uh, he did not go above 50% and then go down to 50%. So meaning Bird, as long as he is below 50%, if his cooldown is done, uh, he will automatically uh, charge. Right, so that that's weird though. Look at that. What, what, what happened there? So check it out. My Bird is still at 8 seconds cooldown. And then before the 8 seconds end, look at that. You see? Now this is the I, I am this is the first time I'm seeing this. Why the heck did bird charge before the cooldown ends? That's weird. <laughs> Alright, so this is something that I should investigate in the future. Uh but yeah, for now I don't have an answer. This is the first time I'm seeing this. But just to show you that bird is charging even even if he is not above fifty percent and drops, which is the case uh in the in the past. Now, as long as he is below 50% and the cooldown ends, uh, he will charge. And now, apparently, doesn't even have to uh, reach the cooldown. He will charge, like, at 8 seconds left. I'm not sure why. But yeah, so, crazy. Anyway, so that's it for this video. I just really wanted to be a short video after my long trip. I wanted to rest. But I do want to address a lot of things. Uh, next time, I think I'm going to talk about... Uh, what do you call this? Uh, the uh, the Aurora links, right? So I think I have enough videos now to really dive in on how good Aurora links is. And so, yeah, uh, I'll get to that in the next video, probably next week, but we will stream on Sunday. I'll see you on Sunday, 2.30 p.m. if you are interested in that. All right, but that's it. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.